This is the 2018 interpretation of accounts born to run. Um, we previously dealt with part A. I'm just going to look at part B now. This is a different viewpoint. This is the third point we're looking at. Um, just to bring our attention back to that. I told you early on there was four different viewpoints. <coughs> we have the uh, ordinary shareholder. We have a new ordinary shareholder willing to purchase new shares. So um, an investor really. Um, and the third viewpoint we're looking at here is the venture holder and the last one being bank manager. So a debenture holder is somebody that has given a debenture, given a loan to the company. Um, and basically they're wondering basically how the company is doing and they're going to be most concerned with whether the company is able to pay back that loan. Um, so that's obviously where their focus is going to be because they'd like to receive their money back and their interest back. Um, so it's going to be kind of different perspective to the ordinary shareholder less of a focus on dividends more of a focus on liquidity and gearing and stuff like that um so and security which i'll get to know in a second the question that we're asked to look at here really is just the performance state of affairs and prospects so we've looked at this before we have our performance the same two as the last time profitability in dividend policy if you just notice this the numbers next to the title is the marks going for it Dividend policy is only given four marks here compared to an ordinary shareholder when it would be given seven or eight. Um, it's not worth as much as the debenture holder, the person who gives the loan to the company. They don't really care what the shareholders receive um, as long as they get their money back. The state of affairs now is going to become much more important. There are seven marks going for liquidity and gearing. Um, there is also security. So this is new here for this one. Um, the last one we're looking at for prospects is the sector, so we're not actually looking at the market value of the share, which we had previously looked at, where we looked at, okay, the share was worth 140 last year, this year it's worth 135. Um, this time we're just looking at security, and that security is in relation to the loan, basically, if, um, how the company would be um, able to pay back a loan if they were failing or something like that. I'll get to it in a second. Um, the initial part I have here, um, is kind of I suppose the comment section again I put this at the top um, I'm going to cut that from there and put it at the bottom as I don't think I don't think it's good to think about this at the start um, I'll put it in bold it is important there's four marks going for it some people do leave it out um, and it's a waste considering it only generally takes two lines we're basically being asked whether the debenture holders would be satisfied the venture holders would be satisfied with the performance state of affairs and prospects. Um, it's only two lines, work four marks. Has to go in, I wouldn't put it in at the start, generally because obviously you don't really know how the company is doing. First thing we have to look at, similar to before, it's going to be quite similar for a lot of these. Um, we're doing the return of capital employed this year versus last year. Return of capital employed for 2017 is 10.7%, well above the risk-free rate, cost of borrowing. Um, this improved though from uh, 2016 where it was 12.4 percent this initial first four lines is the same as it's previously been um, this red line here is to do with the common for the debentures and um, you have to relate this back to um, the viewpoint born to run is definitely making less efficient use of resources this year and the debenture holders would not be pleased with the dip in performance so even though they're very profitable their 10.75 percent roce is a basically a reduction on what it was the previous year 12 point for. So obviously the debenture holders want the company to be profitable uh, because that means that the company is obviously making enough money to pay back the loan straight away. Um, another thing that we're going to comment on here for profitability is the earnings per share but it's not as relevant um, because it's more to do with shareholder but I'm including it anyway. The earnings per share has fallen from 20 cent in 2016 to 18.86 cent in 2017 again so that's dropped the um, earnings per share um, has dropped by 1.14 so the EPS has gone down as well. Uh, dividend policy um, relevant but not as relevant as the viewpoint from the ordinary shareholder and new investor. Um, dividend cover is 2.28 times uh, that's the only one we're going to comment on here really. Uh, it's an improvement on last year's dividend cover of 1.3. 
So they're paying less of their profits to dividends, which is good. Um, the venture holders would be happy that they're retaining more of its profits for expansion and future repayments of loans because they want that loan paid back. Very important to make a comment on that. Um, the percentage of the profits distributed to shareholders is 43.96%, which is an improvement on the 50% distributed in 2016. I've added that in here to do, um, demonstrate the formula. We haven't looked at this one before. Um, DPS is dividends per share, EPS is earnings per share. They are generally always asked for here. Either they ask specifically for them or you're required to do them. You would have to uh, calculate them here um, up top and we'd have previously done this. We'd have had to calculate the dividend per share um, and we'd have had to calculate the earnings per share to the price or earnings ratio. So those two figures, um, it's basically just DPS divided by EPS. In our formula list here, I've added it to the bottom. Um, it's our dividend payout rate um, and that's how you calculate it. So the Dividends per share divided by earnings per share gives me 43.96% for this year. So percentage of profits paid to shareholder, it's quite similar to the dividend cover, was 43.96% this year. Um, and you want this to be lower if you're a debenture holder, as it means that there's 44% of um, profits were given to shareholders. Now if that figure is low, it means that more of the profits are retained by the company and they're not given out as dividends. If that figure was higher, if it was 70%, it would mean that we're giving away most of our profits to our shareholders um, as dividends, which is bad from a debenture standpoint because the company isn't retaining the money. Um, it was an improvement for 50% distributed in 2016. What I work out the 2016 amount, well, it's dividends per share divided by earnings per share. Dividend per share for 2016 was 10 cent. Earnings per share for last year was 20 cent. 10 divided by 20 is half, so 50% last year. Um, again, the lower that figure, the better uh, from the viewpoint of the venture holder. Uh, again, dividends worth four. More marks going here for state of affairs. There's three of them to talk about. Liquidity, um, they have a liquidity problem as their asset test ratio is below the um, the minimum amount that you'd want of, uh, of one is to one. There is 0.88 to one for every one euro of short term debt. They can only have 88 cent in liquid assets. Um, it's also a disimprovement uh, trend compared to the ratio was 1.3 is to one last year. So that's gone down. So that's going to be um, a very bad thing. The worsening of the ratio is a major cause of concern to the venture holders because the company may have difficulty paying future interest. And it basically means that um, our current assets in relation to our, our creditors, so our current assets minus our closing stock is 160 minus 90 is 70,000. If 70,000 of current assets, um, money from debtors and bank and investment income due and stuff, um, that money that I'll be receiving soon, I'll only be receiving 70,000 soon, if you take our closing stock out of here, whereas I have to pay out 80,000 soon. So in the short term, I'm not going to have a load of cash to pay off what could be here, um, loan interest due. Um, so that's basically what liquidity is looking at, whether you can pay short term debts. And at the moment, our creditor is falling due within one year. 80,000 is more than our um, liquid current assets for our current assets minus our closing stock, which is 160,000 minus 90,000. Which is 70,000 obviously is less than 80. That's our 0.88 to 1. Um, if you don't fully understand what I'm talking about, I would suggest kind of trying to go through it again, maybe rewinding what I'm saying, uh, rewinding the video. <coughs> if not, we'll deal with it a couple of more times on the line. Um, I will be talking about these sections more and more, and hopefully, we'll pick it up more as we go on. Gearing. Born to Run is highly geared. Their gearing is above. 50%, which isn't good, 53.76%. Um, so they were highly geared with debt to, so there's two things actually we're gonna look at here. So their debt to capital employed, which is the normal gearing ratio we looked at. Um, here, where I put gearing? So gearing ratio, debt over total capital. That's our debt to capital ratio. It's the normal one we looked at. 
53.76%. But we also have a debt to equity ratio. And what that is, is it's our debt in relation to our equities, um, more of a ratio standpoint. So, um, yeah, we'll, we'll keep it in terms of percent, but it works out the same because it's uh, what this is to that. The debt capital is going to be our loans, ventures, and preference shares. Loans and debentures are here, so there's never really a loan. It's our debenture and our preference shares. 300,000 plus 200,000 is 500,000. My equity is going to be my 350,000 and my 80,000, so 430,000. So 500,000 divided by 430,000 is going to work out at 116.28%. That is my debt to equity, um, call it a ratio given in percent, but you could say to 1.16 is to 1. Um, the company's long-term finance is sourced more by long-term debt. I would mainly look at gearing for this. Um, the ideal ratio here is that the uh, it's below 100% because we want our equity to be higher than our debt, um, but this is above 100%. So my debt is higher than my equity, which is obviously not great if your debt is very high. Um, the the highly geared with debt to capital employed, which is our normal gearing, so our gearing is 53.76%, which means just over half of the company is basically financed off of debt. In terms of a debenture holder, this isn't great, um, as it means obviously the company has a lot of money that they have to pay back. Um, the gearing position has worsened from last year, uh, when it was lowly geared with a gearing percentage of 41%. Um, so the gearing percentage here was 41% last year and that's the same as the debt capital employed, 53.76 um, that has worsened so obviously uh, they're not going to be happy. Interest cover has also worsened from 6.3 times to 5.5 times although that is still um, a decent cover. Um, the company is well able to meet its interest commitments, they're capable of paying back interest 5.5 times over. Um, in terms of their, their profit is 5.5 5 times greater than their interest uh, that they have to pay. Uh, but the worsening trends uh, combined with poor liquidity would concern debenture holders. Um, fixed assets are valued at 650000 This is security. So security in terms of if you were to um, if you were to get a loan um, in the morning, if you decided you're going to set up your own business um, and you were to get a loan for that business, the, com the banks would want some form of security. The debenture holder would want some form of security. They want something for, they generally it's uh, vehicles or a house or something like that. They want something off of you if you are incapable of paying back that loan. So if your business completely failed, they'd want something. Um, to guarantee that you'd be able to pay them back. Generally, it's, you know, if people get a mortgage, the security is the house. So if you're incapable of paying the mortgage, what do the banks do? They take your house. That's their security. Um, obviously, otherwise, you could just pretend you can't pay the money back and then there'd be no consequences. So the security for the, the bench or what we'd have here is generally always the fixed assets uh, and a financial fixed asset too. Um, so the, the debenture holder could take over the buildings or take over the investment if we were incapable of paying back the loan. So fixed assets are valued at 650000 Obviously, you'd see that above here. Um, debenture holders would like to uh, know, does this reflect the true value? Um, and has depreciation been accounted for? Um, if you think about this, depreciation is something that the company kind of makes up to give a true and fair value. Um, if you buy a car and you spend 20000 on a car and you're a company, um, you kind of make up the depreciation rate. There's no rule out there. So you might say to yourself, okay, I'm driving this car a lot. It's probably going to depreciate by 10% every year and it'll only last me 10 years and then it'll be pretty much worthless. Um, if a company decided, you know what, we'll only depreciate by 1%, uh, they'd keep their fixed assets high, but it wouldn't reflect the true value so that's kind of what you're coming at there um, and that's the comment that you throw in all the time for fixed assets and um, because they haven't given us information about how much it's depreciating by 
Um, so does this reflect the true um, fair value? Um, and has depreciation been accounted for? Um, which is illegal to um, not include depreciation. Um, however, as the debentures are 300,000, it would appear that there is more than adequate security to cover the loans. Obviously, the 650,000 worth of physical property um, or physical um, assets that the company owns um, and the loan itself is, is less than half of that 650,000. So if the loan was completely, uh, I suppose, failed to pay, they failed to pay the loan, they'd be able to take from quite a bit here. Uh, it would appear that there was more than adequate cover to, um, for the loan. And Born to Run PLC also has investments which cost 200,000. Uh, but we see here there was a market value at the 31st of 12 of 150,000. So they invested 200,000 in investments, but the investment uh, has actually dropped 50,000, which obviously isn't ideal and the investment isn't working out. So the venture holders would be disappointed at the fact that the investments now have a market value of 150,000 and it's indicating a poor investment decision by management. Prospects. Um, short term prospects are not that encouraging. What? Before I say prospects, what are they in? Uh, Born to Run are a retailer in the sportswear industry. Um, so the prospects for the sportswear industry here are not that encouraging due to the fact that the company operates as a retailer in the sportswear industry, which is highly competitive with leading brands dominating the industry. Long term prospects are concerning um, as the world economy is suffering due to the global, pan global pandemic. Consumers have less disposable income to spend in the sportswear industry. Born to Run would also need to spend money to protect itself from the intense competition in the industry. We would also need to spend large amounts of money on brand proliferation and advertising. But considering their current liquidation situation, this may prove difficult. This is a general statement um, you'd make in terms of the fact that uh, as a company that sells their own sportswear, it's really competitive. It's completely dominated by Nike and by Adidas and Under Armour and all those top brands. Um, people have less disposable income because obviously there's a recession that's going to take place uh, because of the uh, COVID um, pandemic. Um, Born to Run will also need to spend money um, basically on branding themselves as much as possible um, so that people are aware of Born to Run as a brand. Um, but in order to spend all their money on branding, they would need to have a better financial situation as current leader. Um, their liquidity isn't great. Um, the debenture holders would not be satisfied with the performance, state of affairs, and prospects of the company um, ahead for the following reasons there, but makes no sense if you put it at the end. Uh, so this, uh, in terms of this, comparing this to ordinary shareholders, because I do think it's important um, to kind of look at this in terms of, okay, what have I dealt with so far, and what's different? To be honest, this is pretty much quite the same. You're just trying to reference here the fact that venture holders would be pleased with an increase in ROCE and they'd be disappointed if it went down. I would include the EPS here as well. It's generally something that you'll always have to calculate anyway here. So just state whether it's gone up or down compared to last year and whether that's a positive or negative trend. Um, dividends is not as important. Uh, definitely important to include the, obviously there are marks going for it so it still needs to be included. Um, you definitely have to include dividend cover but Dividend yield and dividend per share generally won't be needed. You don't need to write paragraphs on dividends. There won't be as much marks going because debenture holders don't care as much as shareholders. Um, so dividend cover, again, you'd want this to be broke to and you'd want this to increase. As a debenture holder, um, you'd want this to be as high as possible because it basically means that if this was 10, um, an example of the dividend cover, if it was 10, it would mean that from our profits, we could pay dividends 10 times over. The difference between that and a dividend cover of two would basically be, if the dividend cover would be two, it would be half our profits are being paid to dividends. If the dividend cover is 10, it would mean a tenth, 10% 10 of our profits are going to dividends. Um, as a debenture holder, you don't want the company to be giving out money to shareholders because it's taking money away from your profits for next year and that you're not investing in the company. Um, you want all that money to be put back into the company and as the venture holder 
you would want all that money to pay back all the interest that's due and to pay back the loan and in order to pay back the loan the company would need to um, be profitable and holding on to that profit rather than give it away to shareholders to make them happy liquidity similar again to what we've seen before again we want this to be above one uh, but we're also focused on the trend this is obviously the trend's gone down and it's below one um, and the trend's gone down a nice bit that's pretty much a disaster um, so they would be under pressure to pay back interest because they'd be under pressure to pay back short-term loans with a um, negative trend like that gearing uh, above 50 percent don't be confused by the fact that I've called gearing debt to capital employees that is the same term as gearing um, I have an additional ratio in here as well it's just debt to equity ratio um, so above 100 percent for this one and it's bad you want this to be below 100 percent the same way you want this to be below 50 percent um, so that's just talking about that we have the um, trend as well in terms of it being worse compared to last year because last year we were lowly geared interest cover has also been reduced but again um 5.5 is still a decent rate security i did go through that a bit and i gave that a bit of time and sector that's just something you have to look at um every now and then the similar sectors come up and you do start to see the same ones um so that's how you'd answer a sportswear company uh, so this is a debenture holder standpoint